I started my ceramics journey in March of 2021, and since then, I have sold at multiple art markets, galleries, and on my own website. Looking back, there were certain things I wish I knew sooner. So today, I want to share with you three top things I wish I knew. The number one and most important is to not wait until your pieces are perfect to start selling your work. If you already started dabbling in ceramic making, you are probably wondering when what would be good enough pieces to sell. When I first started making ceramics, I had a lot of doubt whether I could sell the pieces I make. I didn't really have a clear style in the beginning, and I questioned if people would buy my pieces. So after half a year, I started accumulating a lot of pieces in my house, and I decided to try and sell them at an art market just so that I can have more room in my house. I didn't know how to price my pieces. I didn't know how art markets work, how many pieces I needed for an art market, etc. I just went for it. And the first time I did an art market, I think I sold maybe two pieces for a total of $50, which was just a little bit more than what I paid for that market, which was $35. I was really excited that I broke even. It gave me an extra $15 to continue buying the clay and other supplies and be able to practice making more ceramics. So my thing about selling your work is that it's just like making pottery. You have to practice selling just like you practice making pottery. I once read a story about a professor who split his pottery class in half. He told half of the class that their pots would be graded based on quality and the other half based on how many pieces they can produce. Surprisingly, or not so surprisingly, the group that went with quantity had better pieces overall because they were less afraid of making a perfect pot and practice way more than the first group. So focusing more on quantity rather than quality at the beginning will help you hone in your um, selling skill as well as your making skill. And the most rewarding ex experience as an artist is to release your art back into the wild by selling it. If you're just starting out from your ceramics journey, I highly recommend you try selling it either online or in person. It really helps get rid of the inventory you have. It gets you a little money back to buy more clay or supplies that you can play with. And it helps you figure out what you like and what kind of audience you would want to have. If you're wondering where else to sell your pottery other than our markets, maybe you don't, ha you don't live in an area where there are a lot of markets. I also sell online. I use my own online website hosted by Shopify. And I know that Etsy is the other big platform where a lot of artists sell their work. Even though Etsy is much cheaper per item when you are starting out, I prefer building my own brand on Shopify and maintaining my own email list so I can be more independent and own my audience. In my mind, even though it's $29 a month, if I sell one mug, I'll make my money back and so. And Shopify really elevated my website to look professional, even with their free templates, so I use the craft template. Honestly, it doesn't really matter when you're first starting out. It doesn't really matter which platform you go on. You can just pick whichever one you like better and just go for it. If you later on, you realize you don't like Etsy, you can just change it to Shopify. If you realize you don't like Shopify, it's too expensive, you can change it to Etsy, vice versa. The second biggest lesson I learned is to not compare yourself with others on social media. This is very hard to do. Envy is the thief of joy. I, as I learned, I, I see ceramic artists on Instagram, they would sell out 10 minutes after their shop update start. And it always leaves me wondering when my work would become that desirable. It's hard to compare yourself with others on social media though, because there really isn't any good way to actually accurately compare or even benchmark your business with them. Lots of factors go into a successful shop update that if you don't have the full view of others' businesses and financials, it's hardly fair to compare yourself with others. For example, you don't know how long others have been running their businesses. 
how many pieces of work they made available for sale, what is their Instagram conversion rate, meaning how many followers turn into buyers, whether they are full-time or part-time artists, and how much time they have to spend on making reels, marketing, running their businesses, etc. All of these factors wildly influence how a shop update would perform. Not to mention perception and scarcity that comes into play it makes it even more complicated. So as a ceramicist who promote their work on Instagram, inevitably, I spend a lot of time on it as well, more often than I would prefer. Sometimes I can't help but scroll on Instagram for hours a day, seeing and comparing myself with others. So here are a few tricks that I do to stop myself from comparing. Number one is that I write my own mission in art somewhere visible on my desk so that I can remind myself it's not just about clout or number of followers or sales. Number two is I a lot 20 to 30 minutes a day on Instagram to edit my reels and schedule it to post. And after that, my phone locks the app to remind me not to mindlessly scroll. If you also have iPhone, this is, um, I only know how to do it on iPhone, but I'm sure you can look it up for Android. So for iPhones, you can go to settings, screen time, app limits, and limit the time on apps you want to use less, like Instagram and TikTok. And I'll put the detailed info in the description if you can't catch it while I'm talking. So the third way I do is um, I look at my own goals, my own ceramic goals, and see how much I've achieved this year and what I should be working on. And this way I focus on myself and force myself to be in the moment. The fourth way, which is probably my favorite way to stop comparing myself with others is to write in my gratitude journal. Um, I usually write like three things that I feel grateful for in my ceramic business. So just to give you an example today, I wrote, um, I feel really grateful for having the fine motor skill to be able to do ceramics and be able to enjoy it. I love that I have so many ceramic friends and community around me to support me and really excited about this new tea strainer product that I developed. Doing these little things really help me focus more on my own work and it makes me feel calmer about where I am in my journey. So if you have tips and tricks that help you live in the moment and stop comparing with others, please share it in the comments with others. The third biggest learning I wish I knew sooner is related to pricing your work and that there is no right answer when it comes to pricing. There's always someone who's going to think your pieces are overpriced and others who think it's underpriced. When I started selling my work, I charged very little for my pieces and a friend of mine described my pricing as comically low. So I started looking at other ceramicists and try to learn what they charge for an average sized mug. For example, Florian Gatsby charges 50 pounds, which is about $60 for a medium sized mug. And is mine as good as his? No way. So maybe I'll charge a little less. But wait, I see this Canadian based ceramicist charge her work with detailed drawings and sculpting pieces on hers, just like mine, for 120. Is mine better than hers? Well, maybe some of them. Can I charge 120? Maybe, maybe not. Um, you have to do a little bit more market research also to figure out in your area or from your audience how much people are willing to pay for a piece. But the good thing about it is that having your own business means that you can change that price. If it doesn't work out, then increase it, decrease it, see how it works, give it a little time, and see how the market gives you feedback. So here are the three things I wish I knew sooner. Number one is to start selling your pieces early. Number two, don't compare yourself with others. And number three, there is never a wrong answer for how much to charge for your pieces. You have to make some mistakes to learn the art of selling as well as the art of making. So jump in now, don't wait, and I will see you next time.